Welcome to the Wellsteading Podcast. This is episode 349. Today is December 21st, 2021. I'm your host, John Pagliano. I'm also the founder and money manager at investablewealth.com. Well, in this episode, I'm going to phrase things a little differently. It's the Christmas season and I'm doing this podcast to fill a desire that I've had for a long time. I've wanted to talk about Morris Code and I know that it's not a topic that 99.9% of you are interested in. So before you stop listening, let me explain why and why you might want to listen in, even though the title may not appeal to you. Hey, let me start off by saying that Morse code is a system that uses dots and dashes, mostly in an auditory format, to be able to communicate a message, just for anybody that doesn't know what Morse code is. Nowadays, it's mostly used as a subset of the amateur radio hobby and service. So it's through ham amateur radio that I've been able to pursue my interest in this hobby. Now, why on earth would anybody want to do it? And how can it make you rich? Well, that's the topic of this episode. And I'm assuming at this point that most people that had absolutely no desire probably already saw the title and have passed on and gone beyond it. So if you're the two or three people that are still left, well, stick with me. Okay, as far as Morse code, it's a hobby of mine. It's something that's rather archaic and out of the mainstream. But the reason I'm tying it in with the title of How It Made Me Rich is because it's been my experience over, you know, many, many decades that the way you really do build wealth is personal to you. It's all about maximizing your personal abilities. Okay, and so as I talk in this podcast, I'll be talking a little bit about actually investing, but this is from a broader perspective because, you know, we build wealth not only through the way we invest, but the two steps before that are learning to earn an income and to save a large percentage of that income. And then all three of those, learning how to earn, save, and invest, they're all about lifestyle choices. That's why the tagline to this podcast is that it's a lifestyle to build and preserve wealth. And so in this episode, I'm going to talk about Morse code because it's something that's always interested me. It may not have any bearing or interest in your life. So whenever you hear me talk about Morse code, just plug in whatever hobby or interest you have and look at it from that perspective because the concepts I'm talking about can easily be individualized and personalized and customized to who you are and what you're all about. So there's about seven or so reasons that I'm going to go through here that Morse code has made me rich. They're not in any particular order. And let me just start off with the first of these topics, which is the fact that you need a hobby. Now, I'm not going to get into the fact of why Morse code is enjoyable to me, but all of us have interests and things that we want to pursue outside of our normal career earning jobs or companies that we own or however we make an income, you know, whatever the source of our income is. Now, I am a big proponent of if you're able to take your hobby and turn it into an income-producing job or career or company or whatever, then you should by all means do that. That's essentially what I've done with becoming a money manager is that, you know, many, many, many decades ago, I started investing not because I wanted to do it as a career, but because it was something that was very interesting to me. And then it became a source of income, and then that kind of became a part-time job, and eventually I was able to roll that out into a full-fledged career. So if you can turn a hobby into a income source, that's great, but that's not the purpose for this episode. I just want to emphasize the importance of having a hobby or some kind of interest that you're involved in, whether it's a sport, an activity, socializing, whatever it is. It doesn't matter other than it's important to you and it's something that you enjoy. And the other big differentiator I want to make on this and how this has been a key success to me understanding how to make money and how to build my wealth is that there is a big difference in your skill level between a hobby and some kind of an income producing career or job. Now, when it comes to earning an income, I'm a huge believer in being a maximalizer, meaning that I don't think you should focus on things that you're bad at. Now, for example, I'm pretty good at making money at trading stocks but I'm horrible at spelling words properly. So while over the years and as I attained my education, I did do enough due diligence to get myself to where I spell most words correctly, but it's just not a talent for me. It's not something I'm able to be good at. 
And I haven't put all my efforts into learning how to spell words because I can just use technology, things like word processors or hire editors or, you know, other people to spell check for me. Where I make my income is in trading stocks. So I've maximized my income by focusing on what makes me the most money rather than improving what I'm the worst at. Now, obviously, if I was in a different career path, spelling would be more important. But again, that's a field that I wasn't interested in. So when it comes to making a career, I encourage people to focus on your strengths and not worry so much about your weaknesses. However, that's not the case with a hobby. And specifically as it relates to me and my passion for Morse code, I am absolutely lousy at Morse code. I would starve to death if I had to earn an income by being able to practice Morse code. You know, I've been at this for a long time. I can barely stumble by at about 10 words per minute, which is really lousy in the world of Morse code. But you know what? None of that matters to me because it's a hobby. It's a distraction. It's an ability for me to take myself out of the stressful workplace or out of the stressful life that I may be in and for a limited amount of time to immerse myself in an activity that I enjoy. So it's that relaxation, it's the ability to reset, it's the ability to clarify your mind that's important about a hobby. The actual results don't necessarily matter because that's the big difference in pursuing a hobby and having that impact your life than pursuing a specific career. So for example, you may like to garden, even though you kill everything that you try and grow. It doesn't matter, right? Because you're not trying to feed yourself. You're just trying to engage in an activity that you enjoy and that brings you peace and clarity. Learning that and being able to separate those two activities, the income generating part of my life and the leisurely hobby part of my life have been crucial in helping me to build wealth. The income side is about production. The hobby side of it is about recharging your mental self. The other reason why I say that Morse code has made me rich is because it's really required a lot of discipline for me to learn Morse code because I don't have a natural ability to learn it. And if you want to build and maintain your wealth, it requires discipline. That's why I talk about the three-stage process and wealth building skills. You have to learn how to earn, save, and invest. Each one of those requires discipline. People that become rich overnight by winning the lottery or by being a celebrity or something you see that they often lose that wealth because they don't have the discipline to maintain it. Easy come, easy go. And when it comes to Morris Code and my lack of natural ability, it's taken me an extremely hard amount of discipline to be able to acquire even a rudimentary skill level. The other thing that I've learned about Morris Code and why it's helped me become rich is because Morris Code, unlike many other hobbies or activities you may be engaged in, it requires a high degree of concentration, especially for a neophyte like me. Imagine you're listening to a bunch of dots and dashes. If your mind drifts off or you're not totally on your game, you're going to completely miss those characters that are being sent. And then when you try and rethink about it, you're going to be missing all the future characters coming after it. So concentration is key. And likewise, that ability to be able to focus and concentrate is how you build wealth. Whether it's in pursuing your career or researching stocks or building up your network or raising your family, you're going to see that a lot of these things don't come just simply by participating. You got to really focus and concentrate to get the desired results. That is definitely true with Morris Code and my learning curve. Another aspect about Morse code that has helped me become rich is pattern recognition. And pattern recognition is critical not only in trading stocks, but just in identifying value throughout your life. What you need to be able to do is have that situational awareness in every case where you learn to recognize patterns. And as I've studied Morris code, it's really helped my mind focus and pinpoint on that pattern. Imagine you're hearing a series of dots and dashes. And those dots and dashes combine to create letters and characters and words 
and other specific codes and phrases that convey some type of information. So it's not just about noise. It's about being able to identify that pattern and put it all together. So that was a T. That was an H. That was an E. Think of how many times you use the word the in communication. When you put those series of dots and dashes together, you're not just hearing you're hearing the word the. And pretty soon, you go from just hearing the individual character to hearing the entire word. Morris Code has really helped me focus in with the discipline and the concentration to develop my pattern recognition skills. And I promise you, that has made me a lot of money. Now, there's another side to that coin of pattern recognition. It's true in Morse code, and it's especially true in trading stocks. And that's about not anticipating. You can't look at the whole world as simply patterns, because the world is much more nuanced and complicated than that. Yeah, you can look up into the sky and see constellations, and those constellations may look like certain patterns, right? Maybe you see a Big Dipper, or the constellation Leo or Taurus. But it's just a pattern of stars, of lights in the sky. You're not really seeing a lion, or a dipper, or a bear. You're simply just seeing a pattern of things. Your mind will look at those patterns and come up with events and conclusions that are irrational and wrong. Because patterns don't always represent the real world. So while pattern recognition is extremely important, you have to realize when something's simply a pattern, when it's not necessarily giving you meaningful information, and realize, too, that a lot of that pattern recognition comes from your mind automatically filling in the blanks. So, for example, in Morse code, you hear, and you think the, but that's only the first part of the word. And because you're focusing on the T-H-E, you're missing what comes after it, which in this case is R-E. That wasn't the word the. That was the word there. T-H-E-R-E. The way your speed and understanding develops in Morse code is that you start seeing more and more of those patterns. But you have to be extremely careful anticipating what that next letter is going to be or what the next sequence is going to be because you don't know if it's going to be T-H-E-R-E. -E. Maybe it's T-H-E-I-R. Or maybe it's T-H-E-S-E. -E. Or maybe it's T-H-E-M. Or T-H-E-N. Or T-H-E-Y. Do you see how being able to identify that basic pattern of helps you understand all those other words? but you won't know what's coming next until you listen. That's part of the discipline and the concentration. And as it relates to stock trading, it's why you always hear me say, I can't predict the future. Yes, I can look at patterns. Yes, I can develop algorithms. Yes, I know these are trends, but I don't know what's coming next. You're looking at patterns, you're identifying the sequences, and you assess probabilities but you can't be 100% assured of what's coming next. Knowing that limitation has been a key factor in helping me become wealthy. And then the final thought that I want to close on is something that you hear me say time and time again. It's a reoccurring theme in this podcast, and it's heavily related to what I talked about before, which is the concentration part. As it relates to Morris Code, it's about ignoring the static and the noise in the radio transmission that you're hearing and focusing on the dits and dashes that's conveying the information. So in your mind, you have to filter out all that irrelevant data, which might be man-made noise, it may be natural noise, but it's all that crackling and static and other things that are obscuring the true message. To be really good at Morse code, you got to be able to filter out all that noise and just focus on the dots and dashes. 
And as that relates to wealth building, that's why you always hear me say, ignore the media. And I mean the media in general. Mainstream media, alternative media, left media, right media, whatever media there is, most of it is noise and static. And the degree that you're able to pick through all the nuance and BS and focus truly on the real information, that's how you become a successful investor. And even in your pursuit of your career, think about all the nonsense that goes on with things like office politics. To the degree that you can isolate that information and pick out the key elements that really matter in your career field, that's how you'll learn to earn a substantial income. Well, hey, there you have it. That's how Morris Code has made me rich. Thanks for indulging me and sticking with this episode. Until next time, as always, this is John Pugliano wishing you the very best returns.